If you haven't had an opportunity to watch the 1979 film Apocalypse Now, stop listening now, major spoilers, here we go. An army agent goes up river into the heart of Cambodia to kill a renegade colonel called Kurtz. This film stars Martin Sheen, Marlon Brando, uh, Robert Duvall, Lawrence Fishburne, and it's directed by uh, Francis Coppola. I really love this film. Um, the most, I think, important scene happened at the very end. Because the way that this thing ended was, it was strange, man. Um, the copy that I have, it had no credits. Um, all it said is copyright something on the bottom. And then I couldn't even really read it because I was just like, whoa, this is 1979. Like, where are the credits at? Like, why did the film end the way that it did? And then it, it fades to black. And then the credits are just there, but it's, it's not credits. It, it, nothing scrolls, nothing rolls. It just says copyright and it has, you know, the company's name, uh, whoever produced it or whatever. And then that was it. Uh, Martin Sheen, man. I think this for me, I thought this was like one of his greatest performances that I've ever seen him in. And I've been wanting to see this uh, film for a very long time, probably for like, I'd say like maybe 10 years. I kept hearing Apocalypse Now, Apocalypse Now, Apocalypse Now. I saw this one poster um, with um, a little bit of cover art for Apocalypse Now. And it just, for me, it just blew, it blew me away. It really, really blew me away. And I was like, okay, I got to see this film. Um, I was able to catch it on Epix, which um, we have a, uh, how do you want to say it, a year subscription um, free for the entire year um, on uh, Time Water Cable. So I'm kind of, you know, enjoying, <laughs> splurge a little bit on the films. What was so cool about it is that the director showed post-traumatic stress from Vietnam takes place, um, like, I think at the, at the heart of like the, the, the Vietnam era. So you get all those really, really cool scenes, man, like, um, full metal jacket, um, gosh, you know, just, you name it, you go and just think about all those films, but you have that 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 uh the napalm you have the the firing you have the crazy soldiers you have all this different stuff man but most importantly it's all post traumatic stress man anyway the the US government hired this army agent um played by Martin Sheen they hired him to go and kill this renegade colonel okay the colonel was supposed to fall in line and do certain things and then he would take his place as like uh someone really important later on in life but then he just went rogue uh, the colonel goes out into the uh, native's land um, where the primitive people of that land take him on as a god. And he becomes a god. He believes that he's a god. And he can't be killed. And he's surrounded by thousands of uh, <laughs> of little people that, that just pretty much worship him, man. But he also has U.S. troops that are there with him also. And I guess these are probably renegade troops also that have just joined his cause. Um, they they drunk the Kool-Aid, okay? They, they've joined the Koresh. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're following him to his doomsday. Um, what was kind of cool is uh, Lawrence Fishburne is in this movie, but he's unrecognizable because I think he's maybe 17, 18, maybe 22 years old at the most. Looks nothing like Lawrence Fishburne. He's probably, I'd say, at least 75 to 80 pounds lighter, uh, maybe even more than that. Probably, I'd say, maybe 150 pounds lighter, man. He just looks really, really young, really thin. Um... There's, there's, there's really nothing like his, his voice doesn't sound the same. It doesn't look like Lawrence Fishburne doesn't sound like Lawrence Fishburne, but that is Lawrence Fishburne, man. And, um, I think it just, I guess what I'm trying to say is that kind of says something to his craft over time. You know, you know who Lawrence Fishburne is now ever since I pretty much, you know, uh, do the right thing or Morpheus from the matrix, but he's really evolved. And then looking at him in Man of Steel and looking ahead to him in his performance, um, inside of uh, so many other films, like he, he's done an amazing job, you know, with Blackish and Hannibal, you know, just to name a few. What I love about this is that Martin Sheen, uh, his character, he's taking you on the journey through through the war and showing you some really really crazy characters, but he doesn't. His presence in the film isn't like. It isn't too much to where you're like, oh man, damn, you know, Martin Sheen's taking over the movie. No, I think every character that is involved in this, including Harrison Ford, 
who doesn't have a lot of screen time just at the beginning, but Harrison Ford is in the movie. Harrison Ford from, you know, Han Solo from Star Wars. Um, he's in the movie. Uh, Robert Duvall's in the movie. Like, there's there's just these scenes where some characters come along for the ride, and they show up, they perform, and Martin Sheen sharing screen time with these guys. It's, it's just a really great performance, man. It's a young Martin Sheen. I mean, you can definitely see how uh, Charlie Sheen, you know, got his influence um, even a little bit of Emilio Estevez in there. I'm not going to lie about that. You can see how they looked at their father. They were like, yo, we need to take up some of the stuff that this guy does and just, you know, continue on with that, with that craft. Beautiful, beautiful film. Um, what I, uh, what I love the most about it, uh, the most about the film is how real it was. And obviously we're talking about 1979. So all the effects were real. They really were blowing up stuff. They really, you know, went and filmed at a location to where they can, you know, use napalm, where they could, uh, you know, uh, uh, crash helicopters, blow up helicopters, um, you know, stage an ambush, you name it. Wh whatever you see in the film is what you get. It's real. There's no CGI. There's no, I don't know. There's no, there's no trickery. There might be a couple of model uh, airplanes or something like that in there, <laughs> but most of the stuff is real. It's, it's filmed beautifully. And, um, I really, really like that. Okay, one of the best elements of the film had to be Marlon Brando's performance as uh, Colonel Walter E. Kurtz. Now, what was kind of cool about this, man, is like it took me back to Superman, okay? Um, Marlon Brando, he's sitting there talking, and you can just hear Jor-El come through, man. Um, so the role that he was taking inside of this film is like this god of these people. And, you know, later on he would ascend to, the, the I guess, the throne of God or, or become God um, after his death. Because he knew that, you know, uh, Martin Sheen's character, um, Captain Benjamin Willard, was going to come there and kill him. Someone that was sent there. Because the first thing he asks him, he says, are you an assassin? And then Martin Sheen's like, no, I, I, I'm not. I'm a soldier. And he didn't believe him anyway. Uh, Martin Sheen's character, you know, Willard, he got tortured. And it was just crazy, man. Um, uh, another cool thing about the movie was uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bill Kilgore. Kilgore was played by Robert Duvall. It's a young Robert Duvall. I, I think started watching Robert Duvall when he was in his like probably late forties, maybe a little bit earlier than that, but probably like his late forties, early fifties. And this was a young Robert Duvall, like, um, man, I mean, he's a badass actor anyway, but <laughs> we're talking about like a young Robert Duvall. That's all I got to say. If you know who Robert Duvall is, yeah, check him out. I mean, it's just pretty dope. Um, like I said, Lawrence Fishburne, man, he played this dude called Clean, and um, he did a good job in there. There was a guy called uh, Chef. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, there was a dude named Chief inside of there, and that was played by uh, Albert Hall, man, uh, who played Chief uh, uh, Phillips, man. That was pretty cool. But it was like a little band of brother movement on this boat that was transporting uh, Willard out there to, you know, find... Um, Colonel Kurtz inside of the woods and it was just one of those beautiful scenes man everything the cinematography the editing the acting the directing it was really really good everything meshed together perfectly and but I I, I just want to talk real 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 quick and then this will be the end of the podcast the what I believe is the end sequence the the final scene the last I'd say I don't know two three minutes maybe four minutes maybe five minutes all the way into the end credits where it goes black. I think that that was uh, Willard's character, you know, Captain Willard. He went into Kurt's camp, and after he had been through so much, you know, torture and, um, you know, I, I guess you can say <laughs> a, a mind game uh, with with Colonel um, Kurtz. I think that he killed Colonel Kurtz, and then he became Colonel Kurtz. That's what I think that that was, because there was like this little, I don't even want to say this transitional period, like where they had one frame was on top of the other. It was like this Godhead, Stonehead, but it was Martin Sheen, you know, Willard's character that was showing half of Willard, half of Willard's face, half of the um, statue. And then it just went black. I think that that was what they were trying to say there, that he just gave into the the whole entire idea, the notion, um, he didn't believe himself was God, but I think that just being in that camp for so long, um, you know, seeing how the people are interacted, he laid down his weapon. He wasn't going to do violence anymore, but he came out that water 
which I think for me was like the rising of the Phoenix from the ashes or something like that. That's how I looked at that. And I think that he took it on like that. I recommend anybody out there that hasn't seen Apocalypse Now to check it out. I think it's worth it's it's worth looking at it at least. At least one time, man. You know, it's a very, very long film. Um, I'm not saying that it's it's going to be, you know, something like Full Metal Jacket. No, 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 no. This is just a different film. Um, me personally, I think that it's... I think that it's better than Full Metal Jacket. Just because of, of, of what it did. How, how beautiful it was. Um, you know, with the cinematography and the explosions and, and the effects, man. It was just... It was superb. But as far as like the entertainment value, I think Full Metal Jacket is a little bit more entertaining. Um, but if you're looking for like a, a great representation of like post-dramatic stress, I think that this is where it's at with um, Apocalypse Now. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here, man. Thanks again for watching. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And if you did watch Apocalypse Now, what did you think of the ending? What do you think it meant? And yeah, right there.